today's lunch hour fellowship, uh, Maranatha Church lunch hour fellowship. Um, if you uh, followed me uh, yesterday, we were talking about the Jesus challenge. And the Jesus challenge, uh, I'm going to read, uh, for me I've defined it as coming from John 14, 12. John 14, 12 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these, he will do, because I go to my Father. And for emphasis, let me read the Amplified as well, which reads, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach, because I am going to my Father. Now, uh, yesterday, um, I gave a, a, an example of a gentleman from the Old Testament who took up such a challenge. Um, I was talking about Caleb, because the Jesus challenge entails that uh, in as much as when you read the gospel and then you see the great things which Jesus did, Jesus said we will do greater and we need that uh, motivation to do greater. We need to believe we can do greater. The key is belief. What do you believe? Do you believe you can do greater things than Jesus did? So um, I used the example of Caleb, Caleb from the Old Testament. And uh, Caleb was one such guy who, when among the 12 spies, was told, go into the land, spy it out, and come and tell us uh, the result. He went in there confidently. Him and Joshua came back with a good report, being the two good spies, and the other 10 out of the 12 gave negative reports, and the whole of Israel ended up not going into the land that time. So um, he understood the principle of going, that no matter what obstacles uh, would, would uh, be looking um, huge uh, ahead of you, you will go ahead and do them. Can you heal the way uh, Jesus did? According, if Jesus is telling us by his own words that we can do greater things, then um, we can do those things. Can we uh, heal, sorry, can we um, uh, counsel the way Jesus did? Can we um, uh, be a brother's keeper and love the way Jesus did? We can do those things. So in taking up the challenge, I was looking at uh, Caleb. First, I started with the principle of going. He understood the principle of going. And I gave an example. I'm sure Caleb had heard the, the, the word being read about Father Abraham and how he was told by God, go into the land that I will show you. And he believed that uh, when God says go, you go. So um, he understood that principle. And also, um, though I didn't say it yesterday, but I'll start here. Uh, they had a testimony as the people of Israel. They had a testimony that God had brought them so far with great displays of signs and wonders. If you are told to go by God, going by what you have seen God do, how can you not go? God, even in our lives, has brought us up to this very moment. Some of us uh, have never seen uh, the likes of coronavirus. Some of us will never see it. We have a hedge of protection around us, like described um, um, about Job. We, we have the Psalm 91 and all the powerful confessions prescribed around us because God is protecting us at all times. God is breaking barriers and giving us breakthroughs at all times. How can you not go? So simply looking at the testimony, Caleb knew that here it's about going. No matter how giants are looking in front of you, no matter what mountains are there in front of you, it is about going. Then um, they already had a promise instilled upon them. Um, if I read Deuteronomy 1.8, 
which says, See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them and their descendants after them. The people failed to find belief in the promises of God. So therefore, they did not, did not go. They did not take up the Jesus challenge. Is that us? Are we failing to take up the Jesus challenge, to do the greater works which Jesus has prescribed us to do? Are we? Because the promise has already been set upon us. Every day we wake up where we move closer uh, to this next day and this next day because God has promised that he will keep us. He has promised that he will bless us. So as we enter into a new promised land, as God has ordered our steps each and every day, as he did with the people of Israel, he had ordered their steps day in and day out. And he told them, at this point, go in and check out this place and then get ready to go in. But they did not get a hold of that promise. The problem with many of us is we are afraid to go. I'm here to tell you that we should not be afraid to go. We should be ready to go in and possess. We should not be afraid to go. Deuteronomy 121 says, we should never be afraid to go because God is with us. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed, intimidated, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Is that not the promise on our very lives? Are you afraid to start that business which has been on your heart for ages and ages but you keep saying um, one day I'll start that business. Is it the mountain or the giant of no money? Believe first. Go in. And all other things like uh, Matthew 6.33 says focus on the Lord first. Believe on him and all other things will be added unto you. When we go, we find peace and when we find healing. An example is the, the case of the, the woman with the issue of blood. When she heard Jesus was around, she did not sit back. She, she, she said, this ailment has bothered me 12 years. It's time to go. It's time to move. She went into the crowd and she touched Jesus and she got healed. She did not sit back. So we need to be praying against this fear of the unknown or the fear, or basically fear in general because fear has the, 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 the ability to cripple us. It is not a spirit which is of God. We need to be praying that we allow God to do the supernatural in our lives. All we have to do is obey in the natural and believe God is moving in the supernatural. This can only happen if we trust God. So we need to trust God. So uh, the other aspect I wanted to, to bring in here, and I'll read a few uh, scriptures, is Caleb also confessed the right things. Are you confessing the right things towards your own destiny? Or are you holding your own destiny back because you are not confessing the right things or you are confessing the wrong things. Uh, let me read Numbers 13, 30, 31. Then Caleb quietened the people. This is when they, they, they came back from spying. Then Caleb quietened the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession of it for we will certainly conquer it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are too strong for us. Caleb said, Let us go up at once. Others said, We can't. Uh, Numbers 14, 22, 23. 
Surely, verse 22 and 23, Surely all the men who have seen my glory and my miraculous signs which I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness yet have put me to the test these ten times and have not listened to my voice will by no means see the land which I swore to give their fathers nor will any who treated me disrespectfully and rejected me see it. This is our God speaking. The people of Israel were given the exact punishment which they confessed with their own words. I'll repeat that again. The people of Israel were given the exact punishment which they confessed with their own words coming from their own mouths. As the Lord sends us to do great things, to do greater things, let us confess the right things. Let us confess that we have victory. Let us confess that we have healing. Let us confess that we have breakthrough. Let us confess revelation which comes unto us. So to do greater, we need to have that different spirit. Um, re reading again from... Um, Numbers 14.24, I, I read it uh, uh, when we did part one. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land which he entered and his descendants shall take possession of it. Um, I, I didn't read where... The, the people of Israel were confessing that they can't do it. But if you, if you go into the book of Numbers, if you especially read uh, Numbers 13 and 14, you will see that. But Caleb was of a different spirit, as the Bible says. He followed God fully. Are you following God fully this day? Is there anything which you need to weed off, which is holding you back from following God fully? When you follow God fully, you can enter into the place which he has prescribed to you easily. You can enter into the place of victory easily. Because it came to a place um, where, as, uh, uh, I think, let me quickly read as I conclude uh, this session uh, so that uh, uh, we have greater understanding. Joshua 14, uh, 6 to 13, as Caleb did. He confessed, give me this mountain. Now the Bible reads, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Then the tribe of the sons of Judah approached Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh and uh, the Kizite said to him, You know the word which God, which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning me and you in Kadesh Benea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Benea to scout the land of Canaan and brought, I brought a report back to him as it was in my heart. My brothers, fellow spies who went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear. But I followed the Lord my God completely. So Moses swore an oath to me on that day saying, be assured that the land on which your foot has walked will be an inheritance to you and to your children always because you have followed the Lord my God completely. And now look, the Lord has let me live just as he said. These 45 years since the Lord spoke the word to Moses when Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now look at me. I am 85 years old today. I am still as strong as I was and I, as I was the day Moses spoke and the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now for war and for going and coming in 
going out and coming in. So now, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke that day. For you heard that on that day, the giant like Anakin were there, where great fortified cities, perhaps the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them just as the Lord said. I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. So Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. This shows that Caleb rode on the presence and the promise of the Lord and it came to pass. So just as Jesus has challenged us to do greater things, let us ride on that very promise that we too can do the great things which Jesus did and do things to a greater extent and outreach as the Bible uh, says. Caleb said, the Lord has let me live, meaning the word of the Lord came to pass. It means the Lord, word of the Lord came to pass that others failed to enter the promised land. But he and Joshua, the two who confessed rightly, the two who said they could do it, went in. This also shows us that upon entering, though 40 years late, Caleb was still confident to conquer because the Lord had said he would conquer. So he said, perhaps the Lord will allow me to conquer. And he did. So Caleb followed God fully and had the attitude to achieve great things. So we need to pray that we seize all our destiny moments. We need to pray that we trust in the Lord and remove all giants hindering our paths, our paths to the promise of God. And most assuredly, he will take us in. He will deliver us. He will grant us breakthrough. He will give us healing and he will do greater things through us. I thank you this afternoon. Thank you for um, uh, listening uh, to uh, the word of God. Uh, remember, you can, uh, if you need prayer, you can call um, the, the, the number on the screen prescribed for prayer. If you want to give, you can also give via mobile money on the numbers uh, upon the screen. Have a good afternoon.